let take a deeper look into the load balancer in an odd sir a load balancer is a piece of hardware or as we said like or a virtual hardware that acts like a reverse proxy to distribute network or application traffic across different servers right that's what the definition we have already talked about in other words we can say load balancer means uh, efficiently distributing the network traffic across multiple machines to balance out the load and prevent any hotspots correct it also keep track of the servers which are not functioning and blacklists those machines right so it keeps sending the hardware to the uh, blacklisted servers time to time if the load balancer gets the hardware response then it starts serving the request to those servers as well okay and also whenever any server comes back off or new servers are are added to the system load balancer uh, automatically resumes the traffic distribution to to that server again try to imagine like what what a system look like without a load balancer so in this picture if you notice it's a high uh, high level system uh, in which the client the client request directly hit to the application server and so on right in this kind of design we can see two major problems one is single point of failure which really leads to whole system collapse in the event of the any server failure and no request will be served if any of the component fail the other one is overloaded server right which means a single server has to process all the request and response accordingly and however if there are high demand in the product and all of sudden the users increase exponentially then the server will the server will be overloaded with a pile of requests and back pressure will be increase and then system latency will be degraded right so that will be another uh, biggest problem when we are going with a uh, you know very traditional way of uh, designing a system where there is no load balancer available if we add a load balancer uh, into the system how it how it really works let's let's see so in this uh, in this particular uh, picture if you notice we have added a new component to our system called the load balancer so that's that space between the user and the application server right and you you may also notice uh, we have increased the number of number of servers from 1 to 4 right so that means now if once one server goes down there are there are other three servers available to serve the user request and there are more servers can be added to the application server group on demand to get the better performance correct right? which is also called the scaling of a system that we'll discuss later point of time what a load balancer mainly does behind the scene it, it manages the flow of information between the server and an endpoint device it moves the request and response efficiently optimizes the use of application delivery and data resources and prevents server loads as well it conducts continuous health check on servers to ensure they can handle requests so some more functionality of a load balancer is like uh, uh, directing traffic based on data from network and transport layer protocol uh such as ip addresses and tcp port and adding context switching uh between the server to balance the load uh and also applies the routing mechanism based on the attributes like http header uri uh, ssl session id and html form data which will really help to identify a particular server where the request supposed to be sent to there are mainly two types of load balancer the first type of load balancer is called say, it's it's a hardware based load balancer they are typically high performance applic uh, appliances uh, capable of securely processing multiple gigabytes of traffic from various types of applications these appliances may also contain a built in virtualization capabilities which consolidate numerous virtual load balancer instances on the same hardware where that allows for more flexible multi tenant architectures and uh, full isolation of tenants 
among other benefits. And the other type is software base. It can fully replace load balancing uh, hardware while uh, while delivering analogous uh, functionalities and superior flexibility. It may run on common uh, hypervisors in containers or Linux processes with minimal overhead on bare metal servers. This kind of load balancer is highly configurable depending on the use cases and technical requirements. It can it can also save space and reduce hardware expenditures and the cloud vendors can easily handle fault tolerance and elasticity for the users. So these are two main type of load balancer uh, in the marketplace. Right? Load balancer has to identify a particular uh, application server or downstream server to send the request, process the uh, user request. So when we are talking about all these uh, jargon words like context, context switching, header validation, uh, request distribution, so what does it really mean? So it's all about how a lo load balancer uh, works under the hood. So it's important to understand the different kind of mechanisms or algorithms used by any load balancer to identify a specific server out of a group of servers to determine how the requests are distributed across the servers. A load balancer uh, follows one of the following algorithms to determine how the requests are distributed across the server. The first one is the uh, round robin uh, algorithm. So this is a very simple technique for making sure that a virtual server forwards each client request to a different server based on a rotating list. It's easy for load balancer to implement but doesn't take into account the load already on the server. There is a high probability or high possibility of the server getting overloaded with multiple requests if the server is very much process intensive. Other algorithm is uh, called list connection method. In contrast to the uh, round, robin, uh, round robin algorithm which doesn't account uh, for the current load on the server, the, the least connection method does uh, such evaluations and as a result, it usually delivers better performance. The load balancer that uses this algorithm uh, serves the request to the server that is least loaded at that particular point comparing to the other server loads. Third kind of algorithm uh, uh, used by the load balancer is a least response time method. This least response time method is more sophisticated than the least connection method. The least response time method usually relies on the time taken by a server to respond to a health monitoring. So the speed of the response is an indicator of how much the server is loaded and the overall expected user experience. So some load balancers takes the number of active connections on each server into account to determine the request sent to each server. Fourth algorithm is a uh, least bandwidth method. So that is a relatively simple algorithm as well. Uh, it uh, looks for the uh, server that currently serving the least amount of traffic as measured in uh, megabytes per second. Similarly, the least packets method uh, selects uh, selects the server that has received the fewest packets in a given time period. And uh, and the other one is the hashing method. The hashing method is one kind of category make decisions based on uh, based on a hash of various data uh, from the incoming packets. So this includes uh, connection or uh, hard, uh, header information such as a secure destination, IP address, port number, URL or domain name. There is another uh, algorithm also being used by uh, the load balancers. Uh, it's, it's called the custom method, right? So the custom load, I would say. Uh, so the custom load method enables the load balancer to query the load <coughs> on individual uh, servers via S SNMP. Right? The administrator can define the server load of the uh, interest to query. Uh, that kind of, I mean, queries would include like CPU uh, uses, uh, memory, and uh, response time. So till now we 
we uh, know like what is the what is load balancer what it does uh, how it works and what kind of uh, load balancer are there right so now we'll discuss uh, what are the uh, what are the uh, places uh, a load balancer can be placed in a system design horizon what are the places you can uh, you can add the load balancer uh, to to make your system uh, performant so a load balancer can be placed user and the uh, uh, web server and the other places would be the between the web server and the application server uh, and also between the application server and uh, database server correct so these are the places where where we can place the uh, load balancer to make the whole system more performant and uh, uh, low latency so if ask adding load balancer in all these places is not mandatory and of course it depends on uh, the type of system one is building right however doing so can increase the system performance drastically so the next is cas 